Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about adding randomness to stories in Harlow 3.3. As we start to make more complex interactive stories within Twine, and especially using Harlow as a story format, we sometimes find ourselves in a situation where we want to introduce some degree of randomness. We might want to mimic a dice roll, or create something that only appears certain times within a story, and other various situations. For this particular purpose, Harlow provides a macro called random. Random accepts range inclusively from a minimum to a maximum and will select generate, that is, a random number within that. Let's look at example one. So in example one, I am interested in a random number between one and 20. And if we go ahead and play the story from here, we will see it generates a number, in this case, five. Sometimes, however, we want to actually do something with this random number. We don't want to just generate it, we want to save it and then perhaps do something with it afterwards. So for this case, because it is a generated number, we can use it as the value of a variable because the result is a number. So in this situ situation, we can combine the set macro with the random macro. And let's be, we'll see that in example two. We have right here generating a number and then using a story-wide variable role as that saved value. So setting the value to value of a variable to the generated number from the random macro. And in this case, again, one to 20. Well, that's potentially very good, but we might sometimes find ourselves in situations where we actually want to generate something more complex. If we were mimicking or wanted to create a mechanic that was similar to a role-playing game system, where we might express something in a 1d6 or a 2d6 as a one to six die roll or a one to 20 die roll, we could do it by combining mathematical expressions within the set macro. And in fact, we've already done this. We saw that we can use the it keyword within the set macro to increase the value of a variable from something. So we it plus one or it minus one. In the same way, because the generated outcome of the random macro is a number, then we can combine and create a combined random outcome. Put another way, if we wanted to get a one to six plus a one to six, or expressed in kind of role-playing terms, a two D six, we could do that. In which case it would be example three. Set roll to one to six random plus one to six random. And in fact, if we play the story from here, we can see that as well. So I'll go ahead and move the start story from here over to example three and let's play. And I rolled a two. And notice that it did a combined outcome, a one to six plus a one to six. Well, that's all well and good, but often role-playing game mechanics have some type of modifier. They have some degree of randomness, like a one to 20, plus some type of modifier, as you might find in something like Dungeons and Dragons or Blades in the Dark. In that particular situation, let's move over to example four. In this case, notice I have a strength modifier set to four, and I'm adding it to the random 1 to 20, as might be very similar to seen in a role-playing game system. Roll a 1d20, a 1 to 20 random outcome, plus some type of modifier. Now, as we can see here, we can create that within Harlot very easily by creating whatever modifier we want and then adding it within the set macro to the number generated by the random macro. Well, so far in examples 1, 2, 3, and 4, we've been looking at more mechanics or more especially kind of role-playing or dice mechanics. There might be some cases where we actually want to affect what's shown to a reader or create some type of encounter system that's not strictly a mechanic the reader would be working with directly. In these cases, we can use the if macro that we've already seen and then work with the random macro to create some type of randomness in what is presented to a reader. So for example, if we wanted something to only appear one in four times or 25% of the time, it would be one to four, and then we could test, is this one? And if it is, then it happens only one in four times. In which case, you can see my problem right there on the screen, in which case we would see a one in four times, a 25% of the time randomness used right here. Well, let's think of one more example here. In 1, 2, 3, and 4, it was a little more directly reader-influenced mechanics. In 5, it's a little more story mechanics, what might be shown to the reader as part of it or as part of an encounter system. In 6, let's kind of return to that idea a little bit, except we want to I want to introduce a new macro as part of this. 
So when we're dealing with ranges, we will often find that the if macro isn't quite what we need. It's close, but isn't quite. And the reason why is the if macro creates a comparison between one thing and another. We can see is something less than another, greater than another, is another, is not another, equality, inequality. We sometimes want to test ranges, and the if macro isn't quite set up for that. Or it is, but it can get a little bit complicated when we're dealing with complex ranges. That is, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we want to test that something is 1 to 3, and then less than five, and in which case the kind of combinations get very complicated. And we could potentially nest one if macro inside of another, inside of another, but again, the complexity grows very quickly. Instead, we have a macro that will allow us to kind of do that pattern, but without some of the complexity and often headache and frustration that comes along with this as authors when we're creating these interactive stories. Instead, we can see, use something called the else if macro. The else if macro, when paired with the if macro, creates a chain of comparisons. It checks the first comparison, the if macro. If it is true, then it runs the associated hook. If it's not true, then it tests the next one in chain. If that's not true, it tests the next one in chain. And this allows us to kind of reduce the overall complexity. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because when we're dealing with random numbers, we will often deal with a potential large range of things we want to react to. If it's this, this certain range, do this. If it's in this certain range, do this. And again, we want to reduce kind of the complexity and things we're dealing with as authors. We want to make it easier for ourselves. So example six is a little more complex, but not too much more complex. And we're using the link rerun again. In this case, we are rolling one to six and then we're showing the value of the roll, and then we're collapsing the white space. Again, these curly braces, or, or curly brackets or braces, depending on where you are in the world and what term you might use. And in this right here, we're testing a range. So if roll is one to three, so one, two, or three, we're showing a failure, or moving on kind of the next part of this, then we'll test to say, oh, is it less than five? So we're doing one, two, three, and then ruling those out, and then testing four and five, and then ruling those out, and then moving to six. In other words, this is set up as a partial success range. If it's one to three, it's a failure. If it's four or five, it's a partial success. If it's six, it's a full success. And we're using this with the link rerun macro to allow us to continually re-roll, then see the outcome and see the success, as if we were again running, to, running back into kind of role-playing game mechanics. So let's go ahead and move over to example six and build from here. Roll, roll, roll. And notice we can just keep on clicking on it and it will keep on generating that roll and tell us the corresponding partial success, failure, or total success, depending on the number. In each case, we're working with a range of numbers. And again, this is achieved using the else if macro which is particularly important when we're dealing with ranges of things. If it's this particular range, do this. If it's this particular range, do this. Or if it's that particular range, do that. Or we could even make it more complex and add many more. The else if macro is generally not as useful in other situations, but it is incredibly useful, particularly in ranges that we really only get with the random macro and certain other more complex patterns. So it's introduced alongside right here. We have the random macro because, again, we're interested in ranges. So let me review what I've talked about in this video. So we've talked about the macro. We have an inclusive range from a minimum to a maximum that we give with a comma between those two values to the random macro. and It generates some number in that range for us. We can generate a number, as we saw in example one. We can save that generated number as a value of a variable, example two. We can combine the generated numbers of multiple instances of the random macro, as we saw in example three, of rolling a 2d6 by rolling a 1 to 6 plus a 1 to 6 again. Or, as may, might be more common, in a Dungeons & Dragons or pathfinding system, we saw in example four, we roll a 1d20 and then add some type of modifier and then do something with the result, which is what we did in example five. Example five was a little different because it's more story mechanics than reader mechanics, if we want to kind of separate those two. What the reader can access and potentially what we're composing as authors to do something. Five also introduces to the ability to create kind of encounters or random parts of a story that only happen sometimes. This might make revisiting a story or going through a story entirely different each time we run it. Six, 
returns that idea and expands it that we previously saw in kind of one, two, three, and four by allowing us to set up kind of partial success or full success systems using the else if macro, which is particularly useful when we're talking about ranges that we might generate using the mac random macro. So the random macro and the else if macro are the two emphasis of this video, more useful tools as we kind of build into more complex patterns and more interactive stories using Harlow 3.3 and Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.